Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, today, Elon Musk dropped a, an interesting bit of information about an update to the Falcon 9. Although he's previously said that the current Falcon 9 is essentially the end of its evolution, he revealed that uh, Falcon 9 is second stage will be upgraded to be like a mini BFR ship. And a few people asked for some clarifications, and it seems that this is going to be intended as a orbital velocity test bed for the technologies that the BFR or BFS are going to use for landing and descent. If you remember previously, the BFS has undergone some changes to the design, including actuating fins to control its descent in a kind of skydiver pattern. We had a lot of fun a while back just trying to simulate this using Kerbal Space Program along with some fly-by-wire software I'd written using Kerbal RPC. But software can only do so much, and real-world testing is obviously going to be preferred. And with the real BFR booster being many years away, it actually makes sense for uh, SpaceX to use their existing launch vehicle to test some of the technologies, in particular the heat shield and the aerodynamic re-entry. So SpaceX fans were quickly at work with Photoshop to give us an idea of what this might look like. However, I don't think it's going to be anything so radical. I think what we're really going to see is an upper stage with a heat shield and some extra aerodynamic fins. And the reason for this is that I'm guessing that they're going to do this on existing flights for existing customers. So, the you know, SpaceX has done this in the past. They've modified their spacecraft and they've added new features because they want to do iterative testing on hardware as it's launching. So if they were to change the upper stage significantly, if they were to change the payload adapter, change the fairing, that would mean the customer would have to change things. If they changed out the Merlin engine for a Raptor, that would probably change their mass limits and their accelerations. If the fairings were replaced with a pair of uh, doors, essentially, then that would change the payload deployment, and it would also mean that they would be carrying extra hardware into orbit. And given that they're also working on fairing recovery, I I'm not sure that that's what's going to happen. I think what you're going to end up with is, is essentially a core upper stage with extra fins and with the all-important heat shield. This way, the customer doesn't have to change anything. They can still put their existing payloads into low Earth orbit. And then after the payloads are deployed, SpaceX is free to do the experiments they want on their uh, upper stage with the new hardware installed. Now, that extra hardware obviously is going to add a mass penalty, but I don't think the customer is going to have to worry about that because SpaceX actually has a built-in margin that it can compensate for because all these tests are going to be on the low Earth orbit uh, spacecraft initially. And the, the spacecraft are going into low Earth orbit. All those boosters are doing return to launch site recoveries these days. SpaceX have the barges if they need to recover boosters for higher energy injections, and those are all associated with the geostationary launches. So if this extra hardware pushed the uh, customer up over their limit, they could then turn and use a barge landing instead. So they, they would have room for this. Also, you know, the SpaceX fairings have... Not a great amount of room in them compared to the competitors. So it's actually very hard to fill up a SpaceX, a Falcon 9, with uh, enough stuff to really uh, challenge it. So I'm pretty sure this is what Elon is going for, at least early on. It can use existing launches, it can add extra hardware, and it doesn't have to inconvenience anyone. And they're essentially getting free testing out of it. But of course, there are many technical challenges. First of all, that... Uh, upper stage. Right now, a lot of the mass is near the rear where the engine and the plumbing all are. So that spacecraft without the fins will naturally want to flip around. But to make it actually flyable, they have to get the center of mass in the right location. And I think that's going to mean that they have to put the fins as far back as possible. On top of that, the the Merlin vacuum engine has a very large nozzle extension, which is going to be pretty sensitive. So even if they do bring this down to reasonable re-entry speeds, I think it's entirely likely that that uh, nozzle extension, at the very least, won't survive the re-entry. Elon already confirmed that they won't be able to perform propulsive landing because the nozzle extension will lead to flow instability. The vacuum engine, uh, because of its very large nozzle, when you try to blow the rocket uh, you know, through it, uh, because the pressure of the gas will be too low, the combustion won't be stable, so they can't really use it at sea level. 
Now, they could use parachutes, but the, you know, SpaceX haven't had a great history with parachutes. They might use some sort of uh, wing, your know, power wing kind of thing to try and catch it. They, of course, have a pair of boats that have been trying to catch the fairings, but they haven't had a great deal of success with that. Obviously, the aerodynamics can be evaluated using uh, you know, telemetry. The heat shield, might they might want to recover bits of that for actual testing. Perhaps in time they will decide to actually integrate a Raptor into the second stage, but I actually don't think it's needed for any of their customers, so that's the questionable utility of actually doing that. Even although they did get money from the Air Force to investigate using this as an upper stage. Similarly, I don't see the you know the integrated clamshell style fairing actually turning up anytime soon because they're going to be using this mainly with customer launches, I believe. So that, that's what I think is going to happen. I could be totally wrong. We could actually see a real mini ITS, which would be pretty amazing. But SpaceX would, first of all, have to find customers whose payloads could work inside this and would be willing to take a risk. And so I think my scaled down concept makes more sense given the June 2019 date that Elon has already given. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.